Good afternoon. We're going to start with a quick rundown on our COVID numbers and talk a bit about vaccines. Yesterday, the Department of Public Health reported 4,985 new confirmed cases. That was on 92,627 tests. We've now conducted over 9.9 .9 million tests here in Massachusetts. 1,871 individuals are being treated in the hospital for COVID and 383 are in the ICU. Phase one of our vaccine distribution plan is underway with clinical and non-clinical healthcare workers providing direct and COVID facing care being vaccinated with the first dose. This week, the first dose of the Pfizer vaccines were distributed in Massachusetts. In total, 59,475 doses of the vaccine were distributed to hospitals. On Monday, four hospitals received shipments. On Tuesday, 17 additional hospitals received shipments. On Wednesday, the State Public Health Lab received 19,050 doses of the vaccine and began distributing these vaccines to more than 10 smaller hospitals with more distributions planned throughout the weekend. Hospitals have begun immunizing their staff this week. The first staff vaccination was at Tufts Medical Center and 66 COVID healthcare workers were vaccinated that first day. So far, over 6,200 vaccinations have been administered across the Commonwealth. The doctors, nurses, and medical workers receiving these first doses are also the same people who, as we all know, have been battling COVID and caring for our residents since this all began. We think it's great to be among the first, that they are among the first to receive the vaccine. It not only protects them, but it also protects the people that they take care of. It protects their families, and it's a huge step toward getting back to something a little more normal. And this afternoon, the first healthcare support worker at a state-run hospital will be vaccinated. Sophil Soth, an Environmental Services Department supervisor at the Shattuck Hospital, received a vaccination this morning. Hospitals have developed their own plans to vaccinate their workers. They know their staffs the best and are developing these rollout plans on their individual circumstances. We expect hospitals to continue to immunize their eligible staff members over the next few weeks. And they will continue to report their vaccination data to DPH, and so far all the hospitals are reporting overwhelming acceptance from doctors, nurses, and medical workers who are eligible to be vaccinated. This isn't really surprising. These folks know more than almost anybody else how much trouble this particular virus can cause, and these folks uh, have been through it all and have quite a, quite a sense, I think, more than many, about why this is such an important part of getting back to normal. The DPH is on track to launch a public-facing dashboard with immunization data on it next Thursday. This will be posted on a weekly basis, and the dashboard will include information like total doses delivered and administered, as well as geographic information. Next, long-term care facilities will begin vaccinating starting the week of December 28th. CVS and Walgreens are set up to begin those vaccinations in those facilities under the CDC's long-term care pharmacy partnership program. Their teams will travel to facilities to administer vaccines to residents and staff over several days for each facility. And those doses will come from the state's second Pfizer allocation. Many people heard the news yesterday that the federal government had announced that smaller quantities of vaccine would be delivered to states uh, in this first wave, including Massachusetts. The command center was informed by the feds that our next few allocations of doses from Pfizer in Massachusetts, we will expect to receive 42,900 doses instead of the just over 59,000 doses that we anticipated. Many other states have received similar notifications from the feds about decreases in their orders. At this time, it's not clear to us why the shipment amounts have been adjusted. We're certainly frustrated that we won't be receiving the amount that we expected in the first wave and are working to get clarity on what this means, why it happens, and, and how that bump will be dealt with along the way. 
And we understand that while the distribution of vaccines is a massive undertaking, we'll be ready to work through our plan to ensure that the residents of Massachusetts are fully vaccinated as quickly and as safely as possible when supply becomes available. It's important to remember that this change in delivery plans will just result in a slight delay in the overall process. And it's not clear yet if it will affect the timelines we've discussed in any meaningful way. The command center and DPH have been working to continue developing and implementing the rollout of the vaccine to other priority groups in anticipation of the arrival of additional vaccines from Moderna. First responders will be the next priority group to be vaccinated after COVID facing healthcare workers and long-term care facilities. And the state has also put in an order for 120,000 first doses of the Moderna vaccine, which should receive, did receive, is it getting, did it get it yesterday or is it getting it today? Today. Um, which should receive its emergency use authorization from the FDA today. And we expect to start receiving those doses early next week. As we continue to move forward, we'll continue to provide the latest information that we have available to the public on this process. And residents can obviously learn more about this by talking to their doctor about the vaccine or by visiting mass.gov slash COVID vaccine. Before I close, I want to mention a bill that we're filing today to ensure that we continue to provide unemployment benefits for those who are out of work during these unprecedented times and to provide relief for the Commonwealth's employers as well. As we've said before, the Commonwealth borrowed funds from the federal government to keep the Unemployment Trust Fund at a level that can sustain payments to the thousands of Massachusetts workers who lost their jobs through no fault of their own due to this crisis. At the same time, the sheer volume of unemployment claimants means that under current circumstances, UI rates, the rate that's actually paid by employers, would automatically be scheduled to increase at the beginning of next year. The legislation we're filing today proposes to do two things. First, we want to freeze the unemployment insurance contribution rates for employers, which will provide immediate and important relief to all businesses across the Commonwealth. Second, we want to enable the Commonwealth to issue special obligation bonds for the purpose of repaying the federal funds we received this year to keep the UI Trust Fund solvent. Issuing the bonds to pay back these federal funds will save money for both the Commonwealth and its employers and ensure that we can continue to pay unemployment benefits to those who need them. And we look forward to working with our legislative colleagues to pass this legislation to support continued unemployment benefits for Massachusetts workers and critical relief for our employer community as well. It's obvious, by the way, that the arrival of the first vaccines is a huge step toward restoring what we might call normal around here. I'm sure that the videos and the photos of healthcare workers being vaccinated across the country have given hope to many that we are, in fact, turning a corner. There's obviously a light out there at the end of the tunnel, but we all need to hold on a little longer and we need to keep doing all the things we've talked about that are effective to fight the virus in the months ahead. And people need to know, need, people already know what it is they need to do. Wear a mask, don't gather in groups, stay home except if you need to go to work or school or the store, and recognize and understand that everybody has been touched by this virus in one way or another. And the best thing we can do at this point in time to maintain control and manage the spread is to do the things that we all know reduce the spread in the first place. We'll be back to talk a little more about that next week as we head into the week of the holiday season here. But mostly what I want everybody to take away from this is how important the role that you play in how this virus affects you, your family, your friends, and your neighbors can be in helping us deal with the spread in the first place.